Welcome to Talking Transport. I'm your host, Jacqueline Brotherton, and with me today is Gary Ma, the CEO of the Queensland Trucking Association. Welcome, Gary. Thanks for being here with us today. Thanks, Jacqueline. No trouble. I just wanted to talk to you about what's happening around the, the country at the moment with all the COVID regulations and all the different state regulations. And I noticed that the QTA was putting out a lot of information to their members of what's happening. If you want to just and had some workshops on the COVID sanitisation statements, if you want to just talk about that a little bit first, what, what the QTA has been doing. Well, we certainly make sure uh, our members are as uh, best informed as they could possibly be. Uh, so we do take an outlook that um, whilst they're a Queensland um, member, uh, we're looking out for their interests wherever they might be around the country. So um, uh, what we try to do is take all the different uh, pieces of information from a, a huge swag of sources and um, apply an interpretation of that so that in a fairly straightforward way, an employer and or a driver can look to see if I want to go from A to B, I need to do this, this, this and this. And, uh, and I'll be right to go. So um, uh, what we try to avoid is, um, you know, just sending people to websites as such, which are quite complex and, and um, in many cases convoluted. Uh, so what we're trying to do is, um, you know, apply a, you might call it an interpretation service so that um, there's a good and, and uh, straightforward understanding of, of what you need to do. And I think as well, there's so much disinformation out there that the, the information has to be very timely to get out to them as well. And as you say, going from website to website can be very, very difficult for the drivers and indeed the people in the transport offices. So I think that's been something that I've seen on the, you've been on the forefront of right from the very beginning. Um, and that, that shows just you know, what you can do if you have to. Yes, and we, um, we provide that service like seven days. I mean, in the last uh, 18 months, it really has been seven days a week, night and day. And uh, some of these CHOs have got into the habit of releasing uh, health directives at, you know, two o'clock on a Saturday afternoon or, you know, three o'clock on a Wednesday morning. Uh, so we, we get that information out as promptly as we can. And we use all the different mediums, um, you know, social media and, uh, you know, relatively standard comms and, you um, um, you know, television, print media and, and, and other options uh, so that we get that information out as promptly as we can. So there's plenty of other, we, we've taken a, a more um, um, outward sort of look at the industry and uh, whilst we um, message our uh, members directly uh, by using these other different mediums, we'd like to think it's a, a general help more broadly across the industry. Yes, and that's what I've noticed as well. It's not just for your member member base. The Queensland uh, Board of Regime has been pretty rigorous uh, throughout all this, and I believe that's going to stay that way for quite some time. Um, have you found that to be more rigorous than other state borders, or it's just changing uh, as as time goes on, or back and forth, or how are you finding the border crossings for your for all all transport, obviously? Well, I think there's been times when it probably has been the most rigorous. Um, um, at the moment, it's probably a little arguable as to which is the most rigorous. Uh, Western Australia is probably getting close. But um, uh, in our case, uh, it's been relatively consistent with the, um, the seven-day requirement. Uh, that's now moved to a neg result with seven days. And those who are moving down through those 12 LGAs in... Um, Sydney, you have to have a, um, a evidence of a test every three days. So the reality for my, a lot of our drivers is they're having to have a test about every second or third day on a continuing basis. So um, that's, that's a very intense uh, level of testing. And that's why we introduced, um, you know, the, the policy option of um, looking at rapid antigen testing as, um, as another alternative. Uh, we also are looking for relief with uh, uh, vaccination. And that is that if drivers do uh, have the, the double vax, uh, why can't we move out to um, at least seven days so that um, we can take some of that intensity off uh, the testing requirements. So the policy uh, construct has been a very moving um, arrangement almost all the way through. Uh, so on the one hand, that's, uh, very strong imperative to keep uh, the industry informed. But on the other hand, we've continually 
advocated our cause to try and bring as logical and as practical a set of uh, policy requirements as we can. So it's trying to find that balance. You know, how far away do you think the rapid antigen testing uh, will be for the truck drivers? Well, it has been adopted in principle uh, in the freight protocol, but we need a, one of the CHOs now to adopt it. Uh, we were nearly there with New South Wales uh, with RA testing in those 12 LGAs, and then they withdrew that option at the 11th hour, uh, virtually literally. Um, so uh, there's been a push. We've had a circumstance with South Australia where they um, adopted mandatory vaccination and then within four days withdrew it. Um, we understand that Victoria is certainly seriously considering it. Um, so we think it's inevitable that um, mandatory vax or something very close to that is on its way. Um, so if that is the case, we're looking for rapid antigen testing and or a longer period between surveillance testing to be applied for those drivers who choose to um, go down the double vax path. So bear in mind, you know, it's uh, not all of the industry that goes across borders. There are many drivers who operate intrastate. Um, we don't expect that they're going to have um, uh, mandatory vax applied to them, but we do have an expectation that it's probably coming for uh, cross-border operations. What are your thoughts on the recent press release from the VTA about the mandated vaccines? Well, we support their approach. Uh, as an industry, we expect that mandatory is going to be applied. We would prefer that it's not. Uh, but uh, as I said before, we're going down the path of uh, assisting our employers to encourage their drivers to, um, to vaccinate. Uh, we have very high um, adoption rates in some fleets and not so high in others. Uh, we prefer to see people make a considered choice and vaccinate. And uh, we think over the next couple of months, um, the, the uh, vaccination rates within our fleets will be quite high. Absolutely. I, th I think so. People will go down that path so they don't have to keep having the tests over and over and over again. Yeah. I think you're exactly right. Thank you very much, Gary. Thank you for joining me today. Thank no you. trouble. Thank you. Right. Bye. Now is the time to reduce costs and get better service from your logistics partners. We go to market for you. We do all the work, you make all the decisions. First, we review your requirements, customised to your business. Then, we design your tender documents, RFQ, and submission templates. Next, we put it out to market, to suitable service providers only. We analyze and score the submissions using a weighted scorecard. We shortlist the best candidates specifically matched to your needs. We invite presentations from the candidates. They compete for your business. You select and enjoy the benefits, including KPIs and SLAs. We offer fixed price programs starting from as little as $5,000. When did you last compare your service providers? Contact us today at the Australian Trade and Logistics Corporation. Welcome back to Talking Transport. I'm your host, Jacqueline Brotherton. With me now is True Ross of Ross Transport at Port Kembla. Welcome, True. Thank you for coming in and meeting with us today. Thank you for inviting me, Jacqueline. I'm most happy to have you here with us. True, we're just going to talk to you today a little bit about the impact all the COVID restrictions and border crossings and all that have had on your company with all the constant changes and the impact that's had on your office staff as well as your drivers. Yeah. And then we'll talk a little bit about the changes and effects and physical and mental well-being of the drivers during that time. So I know you've been through all that. Uh, as well as having twins in the middle of it all. So <laughs> been a high pressure yes, time for you. It, it's a fun time at the moment. Um, so if you want to just talk about how it's affected the company and how much extra pressure it's put on, uh, yeah. obviously with those border closures and everything. 
Yeah, so it's just obviously, I mean, we have to have permits pretty much to go into anywhere that we want to go. And for the office staff and for the drivers trying to keep on top of it is so difficult, um, you know, on a time wise, but also knowing what you need to apply for and, and where you need to apply for. So, I mean, we run predominantly just on the eastern um, seaboard. So we've got Queensland permits, Victorian permits and regional New South Wales permits that the drivers um, are supposed to apply for themselves, um, but they don't. So the office ends up applying for a lot of them. And one of our girls is pretty much just doing it half a day, every day, just keeping on top of the permits, applying for permits, making sure drivers have had their COVID tests, um, monitoring COVID vaccination records, monitoring COVID tests. Um, it's just, it's crazy at the moment, to be honest, the amount of time and effort is going into it. It'd be so much easier if there was a national standard across, across the country. So, um, so that person's uh, time is taken with that away from their regular job. So obviously normally you would have someone doing uh, covering up for them as well yes. so uh and those changes just finding them as you say finding the right going to the right website finding the updated changes doing all that and the the associations have been great in keeping all that information updated yes. as much as they can yes and, they have yeah. and i know i know ross transport belongs to all of those but you would have noticed the the health of your drivers with the constant testing you know getting the uh, the Things shoved up their nose uh, and all yep. of that rather than the rapid antigen testing that is available and unfortunately uh, we can't get uh, yep. so you must know how that affects them having that every few days yeah and I mean we even had a driver that was actually starting to have nosebleeds regularly and he reckons it was from having the test because he was getting them done every um, second day just because of the delay in testing results yeah um, so just to make sure that he could, because obviously some states um, like Queensland are really strict and if you can't provide evidence of that test and sometimes places don't have certificates and stuff like that. So he was getting it every second day and he actually said that his nose was starting to bleed. Yeah, I've heard that before as well, that we've, mm. had, we've had truck drivers. And so they started uh, doing some throat tests on some of them because their nose just couldn't take it anymore. So that, yeah. that and that's definitely got to have their uh, mental well-being uh, affected by that. So have Ross Chan Transport put in some issues, you know, some guidelines about around the mental health uh, aspect of, of all this? I think it's more just, you know, every day we're communi communicating with our drivers. So our schedulers are communicating with them and I work three days a week. So pretty much every day that I'm at work, I'm speaking to various drivers on the phone, um, just seeing how they're going and how they're traveling. Um, and also just being there for a chat, because honestly, they are they're struggling, they're over it, it's hard, like their job is hard enough, let alone trying to keep up with what the government, um, you know, restrictions are and what they are required to do just to do their job. So, you know, we're allowing them um, time off for their COVID tests or their COVID vaccinations if, that what, if that's what they need. And I mean, we're always pretty flexible anyways, if they feel they need an extra day off of the week or anything like that, that's, that's I mean, that's fine. Um, and even even now that that is fine as well. So, so are you having or are the drivers finding that there's a lack of facilities open to them? I know that's an issue last year, and there's been an issue in different places, uh, like Bilgandra and Long the Hume and, and Moree and stuff. This time, are they having that issue again? Um, not so much. A couple of weeks ago, there was a couple little issues, like just minor, nowhere near the issues that we had last year, though. Thankfully, um, and I think of, like the associations, and we even found. Um, our drivers were saying that they, um, a couple of the police officers they passed were being quite harsh. And then um, one of the commissioners came out and actually said, what are you doing? Like stop, you know, stop, stop, treat, stop treating them like that. And then like, this is actually at a rest stop facility. Um, so I think this, this time around, it is a lot more positive than last year. Last year, the drivers really did struggle with facilities being closed. Um, and it was really, really difficult for them. But this year they haven't encountered as big of a problem. Okay, that, so that's... This time round, not this year. <laughs> yeah, this time round. It's just yeah. been coming and coming and coming. You forget that it was this year, last year, last month. Yeah. <laughs> you know, which lockdown was it? Yeah, I know. Just get back to normal and then we go right back there. <laughs> um, is there anything else, like, you know, with the changes and with the or everything that's going on, is there anything else that has sort of come to the front with all this, like with the vaccinations? Are you having, uh, uh, is like your company thinking about mandating them to come to work or is that something that's going to be the driver's own choice, whether it's going to happen or are you finding your customers are going to mandate they get vaccinated? So yeah, so us as a company are not mandating. Um, however, some of our customers have already um, suggested 
um, that it may become mandatory for them. So we haven't got anyone yet that has made it mandatory. Um, but we have, um, yeah, like I said, customers that have said, you know, soon it will be mandatory. Um, but we are strongly recommending to our drivers and providing flexibility for them to get the vaccinations done. Um, and also the medical centre that we use is putting them um, in, in front slightly. It's still a waiting list, um, especially for Visor, but they are putting them um, slightly in front because we use them so much. They're able to get a little slightly fast tracked. Um, so, but it is the driver's choice at the end of the day. And I don't see us changing that view um, anytime soon. So hopefully though, they all do choose to get vaccinated because I think a lot of our customers will start to mandate it. I think so too. And I think the sooner that people uh, get vaccinated, the sooner we can go back to normal and, yes. end, and end all the lockdown and maybe we'll get back to some economic viability. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And I think they're starting to understand that now. I mean, especially given some of our drivers have lost work through um, through especially this lockdown um, in, in, in Wollongong. So I think they're even starting to understand if they don't get vaccinated, they may not, you know, we're never going to get back to some kind of normality. That's great. Thank you for being with us today, True. Lovely no worries. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Take care. Think about the clothes you're wearing, the food you're eating, or even the furniture in your home. There is a story and history associated with every product you've ever bought. Unfortunately, sometimes the workers who make your products are subjected to terrible working conditions, are not treated fairly, or the manufacturing process is harmful to the environment. There are many forms of modern slavery and damaging production methods, but it's up to us, industry leaders and the consumers themselves, to take a stand so that we can contribute to a healthier planet and to changing the lives of everyone involved across the global supply chains for the better. Ethical Trade Alliance enables buyers to make informed choices on all of the products they purchase. Welcome to Talking Transport. I'm your host, Jacqueline Brotherton. With me here today is Senator Glenn Stirl from WA. He is the Shadow Assistant Minister for Road Safety. Welcome, Glenn. Thank you for joining me here today. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, so we're just going to touch on some topics that are quite important right at this moment about uh, mandatory vaccines, quicker testing and vaccination for drivers and what's being done and the work you've been get, doing with opening facilities uh, to get the drivers so they can eat and shower and so forth. So if you'd like to uh, just talk to us a little bit about that, how you feel about the mandatory vaccinations and also the getting the drivers turned around to quicker testing facilities and, and getting them uh, to the forefront of the vaccinations if they wish. Well, thanks, Jacqueline. I understand the, uh, the standoffness of some people. I understand the nervousness of some people. But to be blatantly honest, I mean, a lot of it falls back because of the mixed messaging, the poor sale of, of uh, how bad this thing is or how good, more importantly, the, the uh, uh, vaccines are. But I've been very consistent in this, Jacqueline. I'm one of those ones. I rolled my sleeve up and I had some concerns. And I think that I, you know, uh, when all is said and done, um, the first thing I did was take advice from my doctor, not the politicians on TV, because there were so many different messages. And my doctor, he's the health expert, not me, made it very clear that uh, this is serious stuff. This is just not another flu of what some people are saying. So I would really encourage all our truck drivers to, to, you know, have a good talk to their doctor, seek advice from their medical expert. And I'd really advise those who want to roll up the sleeve, please, let's, let's do it. Let's do it for our kids. Let's do it for our, our own businesses and our own states and our own nation. And the sooner we get everyone vaccinated, the better. But on saying mandatory, well, it's going to be a brave politician that actually stands up and says we need to mandate this. Um, but uh, quite frankly, it should be a health decision. And if the health experts say that's what it is, Jacqueline, I'll back it in. Absolutely, I'll back it in. I, I agree, Glenn. I don't think it should be mandatory, but I was reluctant to have it. But I think if we're going to get back to any semblance of normal, uh, that we need to do that and we need to get our economy open and get back to do it. So, yes, I've, I've 
moved ahead and had the first jab and we'll be lining up for the second one very soon. And I think we just need to do it. I, as you talk to your doctor, I talk to my doctor, and I think we need to go down that path as a health issue, just not all the, following all the misinformation that's out there at the moment. And that's unfortunately what is causing a lot of people, I think, not to step up as quickly as they may have done. And you can see that because, you know, I've had so many conversations with truck drivers who have led with, I'm not an anti-vaxxer, but, and I honestly believe they're not anti-vaxxers. Yes. Um, and I can understand the fear of them because I think Jack Lamont made it even harder because I'm of that vintage where I didn't get a choice. It was AstraZeneca. And I know that, um, you know, there was a lot of concern because AstraZeneca was the, the, the all beauty, right? Every, you know, if you're over 40, then it was if you're over 50. Then if you're over 60, and I mean, government, seriously, and, and leaders in this nation, and I'll use the word leaders with my tongue in my cheek, you know, no wonder they've set this rabbit off among all this cat amongst the pigeons. Um, but as we said, Jacqueline, I'm in the same boat. We, we can't continue to keep locking down. Our health experts have said this is the way out. And uh, the sooner we get back to normality, I mean, we mustn't forget, you know, I'm in West Australia, I'm in that bubble in WA where touch wood, we have been blessed and we've had a lot of good luck and good management, but it's only a matter of time. But just not forget, look at all those businesses that have collapsed. Look at all the jobs that have been lost. Now, no one's talking about that. That that's that's what worries me. There's so many businesses will not come back even after the lockdown ends because there's no way back for them, um, and yep. the, and the, a lot of jobs will not revive as well because of that, because of those businesses that will not reopen their doors, and and yep. and that's something that we should all be worried about because that affects everybody and our economy will take years to recover from this, and uh, and I think you know. It, the drivers do need to get some special treatment for their quicker testing. If they're going to test them every few days, they need to be not lining up for those tests. If they're going to make them get vaccinated and if these border closures are mandating, they have to have one test or one vax or whatever before they are across the borders, they need to be able to uh, get in to get these vaccinations done in front of uh, other people. And uh, and they also need to, I know we had some issues of Bulganda with you know closing down the the uh, truck stop there and we need to make sure these facilities are available for the interstate truck drivers absolutely Jacqueline and, and and everyone's aware of what's been going on in New South Wales I mean, New South Wales is the epicenter of craziness at the moment um, uh, but I know with the radius has been shut and, and even as early as uh, this morning we found out that the Caltex in Forbes here we go again now the radius is open but the toilets and the showers closed and we've contacted Caltex and at the moment we've had a response from Caltex that we're not comfortable with the response, uh, simply saying, and Caltex have been good trying working with us, make no mistake, but to say there's no up, update, no, there needs to be an update. We want to know why the showers are closed, but we've got to get these roadhouses open. The truckies okay. are doing the right thing. They're wearing the masks and let's not forget, Jacqueline, you and I both know, they have to manage their fatigue. <clears throat> they are essential workers. Cam Dunsey's come up with a magnificent suggestion and I, I back Cam to the hilt. We need to have these jab centres on the borders where truckies just pull up, stick a needle in those who want it and, and we'll go back to this. If you don't want it and the government says you're not coming in, you can argue to your black and blue in the face, they're not going to do you any good, boys and girls. But, you know, this is what we do. Roll it out. And I had a fantastic conversation with Gary Mann. Uh, probably about a month ago, and of course Gary's been, you know, forefront at the forefront. He, he's been, done a magnificent job for the trucking industry representing him in Queensland, where Gary brought to my attention the rapid antigen testing, and it was Gary that told me that it's good enough for the Olympians and it's good enough for the Americans to buy twenty million. And unfortunately, our government doesn't even want to talk about that. Now, how hard is it, Jack? And I'll shut up after this. If we had that, if we had the government to say, what a good idea, we do it for breath testing, so exactly. we make sure you're not drinking and driving um, or you're lying to the police when you say you haven't, um, you know, to have that in the glove box or employers to have it in the, in the office, but this is just no-brainer stuff. It, it absolutely really, is. You know, it absolutely just, is. And, 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 you're, and you're right. You and Cam are absolutely right about the pop-up jab stations where truckies congregate, depots, DCs, border crossings. Uh, it's not that difficult. It's not that difficult to do that. 
uh, well, and, and take it to them. They, they, they don't have the time uh, in, uh, to be running uh, to these places and lining up with everybody else. And, and we, need to, we need to be proactive in getting the vaccine to them rather than them having to find a place and find a place to park where they can then go and get vaccinated. And I think that's what the word that we need to get out there is that you want this to happen, we'll make it happen. Well, Jacqueline, the mining companies here in Western Australia have been doing it for months. Yeah. We're not inventing the wheel. They're doing it. They're doing yeah. it at their sites. They were doing it at the airport for crying out loud. Or the testing, I'm sorry, we've done it at the airport. And now they, the mining companies are doing it. So, you know, it's, it's, you don't have to go off to, to university for three years to study this. This is the frustrating part for crying exactly. out. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, I suppose just... it's more about supply, I don't know. The, the story changes every time there's a, there's a presso from, from the Prime Minister or others. But you're absolutely right. We, we, need to, we need to do it better and we need to learn from the people who are already doing it properly. And I think that's that's the lesson here is that we need mm. to do it quickly, we need to do it better, and we need to take it to the people who need it the most. That's right. Uh, absolutely. Thank you for, give, sorry? Absolutely. Give them the chance and the choice. Ab absolutely. That's exactly what we have to do. Thank you for spending the time with me today. That's it for today. Uh, thank you for joining uh, Talking Transport. We'll be back soon with another episode. Thank you. Jacqueline, thank you so much. Thanks very much. Thanks, Ben. Bye.